shook me to my core. I wasn't expecting it at all. Hello besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day and welcome to another monthly wrap up. I read 17 books in the month of July. I surprised myself too. I'm very, very surprised and proud at the same time. So yeah, without further ado, let's start with the first book. The first book was a sequel to um, Song of Silver Flame Like Night, but I still haven't memorize the title of this one dark star burning ash falls white these titles are so long I, I know so this is the sequel and i really really enjoyed it i think it is even a bit better than the first one maybe uh the only thing the only complaint that i have is that i wish it had a longer epilogue about the romance but i'm not going to say anything more because i don't even want to hint about the epilogue so yeah the only thing as i said is that we didn't get enough romance in the epilogue other than that i really enjoyed it it was pretty fast paced and we didn't have a lot of downtime between missions so it made it very enjoyable and like you want to read more to discover what's going to happen next and it was a dual pov between lan and zen um also the writing style is so so good it is as the first one very lush and poetic that makes it easy for you to imagine uh the landscapes the environment that we visit along with the characters and the ending was so very emotional um but yeah i thought that it was a good ending to this duology the next book that I read, it was a big surprise and a discovery for me this month. It is called The Soul's Aspect by Mark Holloway. This is a coming of age fantasy and it is a completed trilogy. And what made me pick up this book is the special edition that Page and Wick announced. Uh, and I didn't want to buy the book without reading the book first to make sure that I love it. And yes, I got it because this was such a nice surprise. It was a breath of fresh air. It was so original and unique. And in this book, we are following Callum. He is the son of a widowed physician and he has devoted his life to learn the craft of his father. And the final step to pass his apprenticeship is to do a research project. And that leads him to seek the help of Themya, who recently came to their village. She is an alchemist and also a very rare wielder of magic. They are called aspects, which means that they can see and manipulate the threads of magic in this world. And that energy source is called the aspect. And one thing leads to another and Kellum's life takes a very unexpected turn and he ends up going to the academy where he learns about aspecting. What I love about this book is the very touching friendships where they really cared about each other's feelings and well-beings. It made it feel so, so real to me and I love that. I really got attached to this group of friends. That was so precious in my opinion. Also, there was a the beginning of a romance, but it's not the main focus of the story. The main focus of this book is we follow Callum's journey to learn how to access and how to control uh, this new power that he is discovering in order to make the world a better place for them, especially after they have been colonized um, and he starts to discover things through the academy very dark secrets and twists that we get to discover with him and that ending blew my mind it was crazy it was gut punching and this book was so unique and i really really loved it and i'm so happy that i snagged a copy of this book because it was so so good it was so unique i highly highly recommend this one and the next book that I read was Riley Thorne and the Corpse in the Closet. I loved it so, so much. In this book, we get to meet Riley's grandmother. She's a medium and she's very famous. And at the same time, she's so, so strict with her. Uh, she came to train her and also to encourage her to take her psychic gifts more seriously. And we also get to meet Nick's parents and the other members in his family. And we get to follow Nick and Riley as they try, as usual. They are solving not only one, but they are solving multiple cases, uh, murder cases in this book. This was so fun, 
so bingeable, very, very entertaining. I mean, you will fly through these books. They are very easy to read, so, so very bingeable, and I really love them so, so much. I highly, highly recommend if you want to have a fun time, highly recommend this series. And the next book that I read is another masterpiece from Pierce Brown, Dark Age. What I love about these books is that the relationships between the characters are, and the dynamics are very unstable. Like they change a lot during the series. They can be like enemies to uh, allies, to friends. Nothing ever stays the same and it makes it so much more interesting. And you will never guess how the power dynamic will shift or where the characters will end up. And this was such a crazy roller coaster as always. At this point, Pierce Brown can do no wrong. I hope we get an explosive finale and I hope we get what I want <laughs> at the end. So yeah, um, you already know, six stars. Um, yes, I love it so, so much. Uh, this is going to be one of my all-time favorite series. Yes, <laughs> it's a yes from me. Okay, the next book that I read is a mystery thriller. It's called She's Not Sorry. This was so unique in the way how the story was told. I'm not going to say anything because I want you to read it and dive into it not knowing anything as me. So you get surprised how the things unravel while you are reading and let me tell you that the audiobook was excellent i really recommend it for this one all you need to know is that we are trying to solve the mystery who tried to kill the woman who is now in coma and our main female character her name is megan she's a nurse and she's taking care of that person this book was so intense in the beginning not so much we are just following uh, Megan in her day-to-day -day life. We know what is happening in the city, that women are getting attacked by a mysterious person. Uh, and we just hear about the news and we are following her in her day-to-day -day life. As I said, um, she has a daughter, uh, how she is living, the struggles she, are, she is going through. And there is not so many things that are thrilling, that are happening. But when it hits, when the twist hits or like when it starts, it really shocked me. I binged this book in a day. It was so shocking. 100% recommend. The next book that I picked up was this one. This is an adult paranormal romance. It is called A Curse of Blood and Wolves. To be honest, when I was going, when I finished reading this book and I was going to give my rating on Goodreads, I saw all the reviews and I was like, I was a bit shocked because I didn't understand why there were so many negative reviews. This book was so enjoyable to me. Uh, will it change how I perceive the world? Of course not. But should every book do that? No. Sometimes you just pick up a book for the fun ride. This was very fun, quick hot may i add werewolf romance uh we also have a little mystery to uncover uh we have witches we have um nymphs they are also called dryads in this book we have seers etc like a lot of paranormal uh, creatures and i will definitely continue on with the series i really loved it it was a fun time so yeah, I have no problem with this book and I would recommend it if you want to have like a fun uh, paranormal romance that does not need that much uh, brain power with minimum world building, this is for you. The next book that I read was The Witch Collector. It was my witchy book pick because I didn't want to read the sequel of The Flames of Chaos, I think it's called. So I picked up uh, the Witch Collector. It is a reread for me. Um, and uh, in this book, we have the Witch Collector. He comes to these villages every year and collect the most powerful witches to take them back to the king in Winterhold so they can help protect um, their part of the continent from the Eastern Kingdom. And in this book, we are following Reyna and Reyna's sister, uh, Nephilim. She was taken 
years and years back so she wants to find her and basically run away with her protect her so i decided to reread this book so i can continue on with the series and to be honest the second read was even better than the first one i didn't change my star rating it's definitely a four star book but uh, I really enjoyed it so so much because I got to focus more on the history of this land and the lore and I loved the writing. Charissa's writing style is very very um, it, it is descriptive but at the same time it does not take away from the plot or from what is happening. You know when you are enjoying the adventure but at the same time you want to know where you are, what is around you, without having too much detail. Uh, this is exactly that. I really enjoyed it so, so much. Also, the world building was so well done and the magic system is so, so cool. And the romance was a slow burn and sizzling as I love it. How they turned from enemies to lovers. I was there and enjoyed every single moment of Alexis and Reyna's journey. And I already started book two and I'm so, so happy that I decided to reread this series and hopefully complete it this year. So yeah, The Witch Collector. And the next book that I picked up was Gilded Wicked Mirrors. This is a new adult fantasy romance that I have talked to you about in my uh, August upcoming releases video. This was such a nice surprise. And when I read this book, when I received the arc, I'm so, so happy that I received the arc of this book. I didn't read the synopses. I just read, I read some tropes, but I didn't know what the book was about. So I highly recommend you do that. So you get surprised as I did because some things that happened in the beginning of the book are mentioned in the synopses, but I was so happy that I didn't read about them. Uh, and I was as shocked as our main character. I was so surprised by the amazing world building and the magical vicious mirrors that exist in this world. I was instantly transported into the city. The city is called New Swan Sea and it is filled with magic and bargains. It gave me major, major Caraval vibes and but with like more mature characters and more uh, mature content. And I fell in love with our main characters. Emerus, he is a mix of, in my opinion, of course, a mix of Legend from Caraval and Gaz from Six of Crows. He's so mysterious and morally gray and vicious and devious. And also he manipulates shadows. A plus point, I know. And I love Quinn, our main female character, she's full of wit and snark and she's also so so smart. She's a coroner and she's also a ballerina. So she's very pragmatic and practical and when these two clash, it is fire. I adored every single bit of their dialogue. We have enemies to lovers, we have forced proximity, we have um, vampires, we have magical blessed people. We have trapped gods and mysteries to uncover. I love that we had a lot of twists and turns everywhere. And it really is. It reminded me a lot of Caraval. So if you enjoyed that book, if you want more mature characters and content, I would highly, highly recommend Gilded Wicked Mirrors. This is such an excellent beginning to this new series that I am so, so excited for. Okay, the next book that I read is Listen for the Lie. This is another mystery thriller that I read this month just because my uh, Libby hold came in and I didn't want to miss out on that because I have been waiting for a long time and a lot of people are waiting for the book still. So I wanted to take my chance and read that book and it was so, so good. And I highly, highly recommend the audio book for this one. Very, very very well done audiobook because the format of this book is a podcast and we have two narrators. Uh, we have uh, Ben uh, who is hosting the podcast. So we have a narrator for Ben's character and we have a narrator for Lucy's character who people still believe that she murdered her best friend even after five years. So we are following their dialogue in this podcast and we are trying to uncover the truth behind uh, who killed uh, Lucy's best friend. 
And the only way, I'm telling you, the only way you can read this book is by listening to the audio. It was so very well done and so, so gripping from the beginning. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. Um, once you start reading this book, you cannot stop. I binged it, I think, in a day. Um, so twisty. And once you hear what Lucy is dealing with internally, at the beginning, I was so shocked, but then you get used to it. And I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to say too much, but it was so, so good and twisty and weird and so, so good. And I adored the dark humor in this book. Highly, highly recommend this one. And the next book that I picked up was the book of Azriel. This is by Amber V. Nicole. This is an adult dark urban fantasy romance. And let me tell you, this book is loaded with different kinds of being and creatures who are very, very morally gray. And some of them are straight up evil. And I enjoyed it so, so much. And the universe was so big with different realms, but it didn't feel info dumpy at all when you get to know what is happening in the other parts of the universe and also in like different timelines. It was very well uh, constructed in that way that you understand everything without feeling lost. It was also very well paced and as I said, very easy to understand. I love Diana and Liam's dynamic, especially that she's a true badass, morally great character and that they are very, very enemies at the beginning of the book. Uh, and I love the slow burn too. I really enjoyed the build up to the romance and I'm definitely going to continue on with the series, especially that it ended on a cliffhanger. The next book that I read was A Ship of Bones and Teeth by Karina Halley. This is a very unique, fresh take on the Little Mermaid fairy tale and it is quite dark. Uh, the mermaids in here are not those like cutie little mermaids. These are vicious uh, sirens that lure the men into the depths of sea and uh, eat their organs. So it is quite dark when they describe them. And we have sea witches and pirates too. And we have quite a lot of battle scenes that I enjoyed a lot. So there is a lot of action. And I also enjoyed the romance and especially the character development of the FMC. Her name is Marin was so, so good. I was so happy to see her grow mentally. So yeah, I recommend if you are in the mood for an adult dark retelling, this is for you. The other book that I read was One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. We are following, I think, five to six couples while they are uh, filming a reality TV show on an island and the island gets hit by a very big storm and there is no help in sight. This for me was more of a survival adventure than a mystery thriller, but I still enjoyed it. But the fact that there was no mystery took away a bit from the thrilling part of the story. Since we already knew who was committing all the things that were happening around the island, I was expecting more, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Uh, it was very fast paced. Uh, I would recommend it, but going into it knowing that it's more of a um, survival adventure, as I said. Okay, the next book that I read was The Mostly True Story of Tanner and Louise by Colleen Oakley. This was a cozy mystery that I adored so, so much because we have this um, unconventional, maybe we unexpected pairing of a young woman. She's, I think, 21 and uh, a senior. She's in her 80s, Louise. And at the beginning of the story, they just, they cannot stand each other because, um, I mean, they come from very different generations, but also each one of them is struggling with uh, personal things. And the pairing worked so, so well. And because of certain circumstances, both of them embark on this uh, cross the country adventure running from the police. It was full of laughs and life lessons. 
and I really enjoyed it so, so much. I loved witnessing how their relationship grew in this very, very wholesome friendship. It was so, so entertaining and I highly, highly recommend it. I loved it. Next was another mystery thriller. It is the mystery thriller month, I'm telling you. It is called First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. This is a thriller, but it's not written with like super intense scary tone, but we still had a mystery that we are following. I didn't read the synopsis for this one. So even Evie's story, uh, our main female character, was a surprise for me. And I recommend you do the same too. Uh, it really added so much to the excitement while reading. This was so much fun. Highly recommend this one too. The next book that I picked up was finally <laughs> The Mind F series by S.T. Abbey. And this is, first of all, it is excellent. Secondly, this is an intense adult dark mystery thriller with romance so i strongly strongly recommend you read the trigger warnings before reading this one because it's really unsettling and gruesome and very very terrible things extremely like unspeakable things happen in this book so highly highly not like you need you must read the trigger warnings before reading this book so this is my warning for you but oh my god why didn't i read this sooner brilliant brilliant i loved every single page of it this is an omnibus this has all five books in the series and when i started i couldn't put it down i seriously didn't want to stop reading this book it is so addictive um, you have new things happening all the time and it makes you really it it makes it impossible to put this book down so addictive the writing flows i fell instantly in love with the characters and i rooted for them and i just loved it i loved every single bit of it and i am so sad that the author of this book uh is no more such a talented human being um, and the dedication in this book especially read the dedication after you finish the series it made me so emotional i'm going to read it for you but you will understand it more when you read these books uh, the dedication says this is for the ones who lost their voice this is for the ones who wish they could be lana myers this is for the ones people still whisper about this is for the ones who fight every single day to forget. You are not alone. Even reading it right now makes me so, so emotional because the things that she went through are unspeakable. Unspeakable. I highly, highly recommend the series. If you are going to read only one book from this wrap-up, read the series. I mean, the whole series is about 600 pages yeah about 600 pages and you can finish the whole series so i highly highly recommend it but please read the trigger warnings first i understand that for some people this would be an impossible book to pick up but if that is something that is okay with you that you can think that you can get through the books highly highly recommend it I am so, so happy that I own this copy. I cannot tell you how happy I am that I own this. I'm so, so proud to have it. And yeah, read this book, read Trigger Warnings. So, so good. The next book that I read is another mystery thriller. It is called Never Lie by Frida McFadden. And in this book, we are following a couple who is about to visit, who are visiting a house that they intend to buy, but the real estate agent never shows up because of a very big snowstorm. So they end up uh, stuck in the house and the house belongs to a psychiatrist who went missing. And the wife finds that there are recordings of her previous sessions. So she starts to uh, listen to those recordings uh, with the psychiatrists and her patients. And she's trying to figure out the mystery behind her missing, basically. 
the ending of this book shook me to my core. I wasn't expecting it at all. My thoughts and my mind went in a very, very different direction. And I really loved it for that. It was also so fast paced. I read it in a day. Uh, so, so easy to read. Very, very fast paced. And I enjoyed it so, so much. Highly recommend if you want like a shocking thriller and a book that is so, so easy to read. This one is for you. And the next book that I read was this graphic novel, The Tea Dragon Festival. And what do I say? What, how do I express myself? These are just a big hug. Um, look at those drawings. This is, um, look at that. These are just so cozy. It's a warm hug. It's a cup of coffee. This book is everything, uh, especially after you've read like, uh, like me, a lot of like mystery thrillers and a lot of like high fantasy. This is the one. It was so a massage to my mind. <laughs> Basically, I loved it so, so much. And this was the last book that I read in the month of July. If you made it this far, leave me the dragon emoji. And if you enjoyed this video, please watch one of these videos that would help me out a lot. Also, don't forget to subscribe and join the amazing, beautiful community of book besties here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.